Good morning, friends, and welcome to this service of worship on this Lord's Day at St. Paul United Methodist Church in downtown Ocean Springs. Thank you for joining us, and we pray that you will be blessed as we worship together. Our first hymn is Lord Who Throughout These Forty Days. Let us sing together.
Let us affirm our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now come to that time when we gather our hearts and minds to pray to God together as God's people. And we want to hear from you if you have prayer concerns or joys to share with this congregation through our ministry and staff. Please do not hesitate to let us know. Contact us. And uh, by word of mouth in person when you see us or by email or however. Let us now lift up our hearts as we pray to God together. Almighty God, we pray for all who live this day in places of threat and danger, but especially our hearts and minds are with the people in Ukraine under siege and uh, experiencing so much turmoil. And we pray blessings upon all who are seeking to work for their good. And uh, we ask that you would be in the midst of their strife with them in, in their strife. We find and pray for peace and for safety for all. And for all who have been harmed, we pray your help. And for all who mourn, we pray your peace. Teach us, we pray, O God, the, what your way as we begin this season of Lent. Uh, be our refuge and fortress, our shelter and our shade through our journey all through these 40 days. We pray for those who do not have enough and those who have trouble trusting in you. For those who are experiencing depression for those who are doubting. We pray that you would fill the empty with good things and lift up the lowly, and that uh, you would help us share your abundance through our living and loving and giving in the way of Christ. We trust in you or would trust in you in all of our ways, for you give even to the sparrow a nest where she may lay her young, and you know all of our ways. We pray that you would Make us more determined to assist those who need a place to live as well. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and we pray for your healing upon them and your help in their times of need. And we likewise pray for your church. Uh, whenever we waver, we pray that you would strengthen our witness and our resolve. Help us to trust in you more deeply in all that we are than we do, and we Thank you for calling us into being and making us to be your body in the world and for the world. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. All these prayers we make in his name as we also together pray the words he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It is a good and right and joyful thing always and everywhere to offer ourselves and our gifts to the Lord our God. We give thanks for all of our blessings and we show that in this act of worship that we call the offering. Thank you for your continued faithfulness in this arena of discipleship. 
which we call giving and call the offering and many other things, but is definitely a part of our worship. You, giving is easy online. Many of you do at give.stpaulos.org or through the mail at St. Paul UMC, P.O. Box 909, Ocean Springs. To God be the glory. Let us pray together the offertory prayer. Gracious, Gracious and, and generous God, God, we are amazed, amazed by, by the good, good gifts you, you bestow in abundance. abundance. Thank you for food that sustains us on our journey. Thank you for the company of saints to whom we are joined. Thank you for giving us your work to do on earth. We offer back to you a portion of all that we have received, setting down our baskets in celebration of your greatest gift, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading and gospel lesson for this first Sunday in Lent is the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 verses 1 through, thor through 13. Let us attend to God's holy word. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days and when they were over he was famished. The devil said to him, if you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will be all yours. Jesus answered him, it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down here, for it is written, 
He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. On March 24th, 1996, uh, the father of Leon Wesseltier died. Wesseltier was then 44 years old, and he was an established editor of the New Republic, which was a major political journal at that time. And despite the fact that he had left his Jewish faith behind him in his youth, Wesseltier chose to do what mourning sons are commanded to do from the tradition, in the tradition in which he grew up. He said, in the year that followed, I said a prayer known as the mourner's Kaddish three times daily. During the morning service and in the evening service in a synagogue in Washington and when I was away from home in synagogues elsewhere, it was my duty to say it. The Kaddish, the prayer that Wisseltier prayed three times a day for a year, is not about grief or pain or loss. It is about praise. Praise. It is not a prayer about us and our wounds, although we have plenty of prayers about those. It is a prayer about God and God's greatness. May his great name be blessed always and forever, is how it goes. Blessed be the God who is to be praised and glorified, raised and exalted, honored and uplifted. May his holy name be lauded. Three times a day, every day, Wasseltier prayed those words. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. Soon Wasseltier discovered something unexpected in the strange ritual. He was being changed by the rhythm of the prayer. It was not long, he said, before I understood that I would not succeed in insulating the rest of my existence from the impact of this obscure and arduous practice. The symbols were seeping into everything, and so this season of sorrow became a season of soul renovation. When Jesus was a boy, his life was filled with such practices. Luke tells us that it was his custom to go to the synagogue. He did not go only to preach, to stir up the people, or to make a cameo appearance that could be reported in the New Testament. Jesus went to the synagogue Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath. He heard the lessons. He learned the teachings of Torah. He prayed the prayers of his people. And he certainly prayed, May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. Somehow we have forgotten that even Jesus had to learn about his faith. Even Jesus was a student. Twice, Luke tells us, that Jesus grew up in wisdom. It should not then be a surprise to learn that when Jesus was tested by the devil after he had been baptized in the Jordan and was beginning his public ministry, called by God to do that, led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He was tested by the devil, and when Jesus was pushed against the wall and had his calling and his loyalty to God pressed to the limits, he did not defend himself or resist the temptations with clever conversation or repartee. He quoted the Bible. He quoted Deuteronomy. He quoted truths that he had learned as a child, recited in Sabbath school, heard time and again and again in synagogue. It is written, one does not live by bread alone. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test. The words that served him well in the wilderness were engraved on his heart in worship. It is written, it is written, it is written. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. And so it is with us. When life presses us to the wall, 
the patterns of faithfulness we learn in worship, the habits of the hearts will be there as a resource. I recently read for the first time a wonderful short novel by Judith Guest, Judith Guest, Ordinary People. Now, there was a, a film made from, from her novel years ago, I think early 1980s, which was a great film. It talks about how one family of four dealt with, the, with the, the untimely death of one of them, which was one of the two sons and what they go through. But one character, the father of that family, is a middle-aged man going through a uh, classic midlife crisis. And he is confused and he is adrift. And every time he overhears a conversation in an elevator or a restaurant that begins with, now I'm the kind of man who, dot, 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 he tunes in and hopes, hopes to learn something, some kind of wisdom. <laughs> but he never does. And finally admits, I'm the kind of man who hasn't the foggiest idea what kind of man I am. But Jesus knew who he was. He knew what kind of person he was. He was the one who knew that life was more than bread alone. Who worshipped the Lord and served only God. And who, who did not put the Lord to the test unnecessarily. Where did he get that courage? That moral courage? Where did he get what it took to withstand the tests of the devil in the, in the wilderness of all places? Week after week in the synagogue, month after month with the Torah, year after year with the prayers. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. Mm. Does the name High Thompson ring a bell? Well, maybe it will after this. On March of 1968, Thompson was a young helicopter pilot flying over patrol um, over the countryside of Vietnam. And when he and his crew flew over the village of Mille, they saw a nightmare taking place there below them. There were United States Army troops in Charlie Company who uh, evidently under the constant pressure of danger and the madness of war had just lost control of everything, of their discipline, of their reason, of their humanity. And they had begun slaughtering unarmed civilians in this village. Many of them were women and children and elderly. Over 500 people had died, already been killed. Thompson set his helicopter down between the troops and the remaining villagers, and at great risk to himself, he got out of the helicopter. He confronted the officer in charge, William Calley, and he then airlifted the few villagers that were still alive out of Melee, and he radioed in the report of the scene that resulted in a halt to that action, spreading even more, probably saving thousands of civilian lives. Standing at the platform of years later of university, Emory University commencement, Thompson was given the microphone and he spoke to the question on everyone's minds. How could he, where did he find the moral courage and strength to do what he did that day? His answer surprised uh, the audience of graduates and brought them to a thoughtful silence. Very simply, he said, I, I would... I'd like to thank my mother and father for trying to instill in me the difference between right and wrong. We were country people. I was born and raised in Stone Mountain, Georgia, and we had very little. But they, one thing that we had was the golden rule. My parents taught me early, do unto others what you would have them do unto you. That's why I did what I did that day. It's hard to put certain things into words. You're going to have to make many decisions in your life, graduates. Please make the right decisions because we're depending on you. God bless you all. Why did he do what he did? Where did he find the moral courage? Words taught him in childhood, repeated over and over, do unto others, do unto others, do unto others. It is written, it is written, it is, it is written. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. After his year of reciting Kaddish, Leon Wiseltier went with his family 
to the cemetery for the dedication of his father's grave. And the scene was the friends and family huddled in this, on this cold, windswept graveyard. And there, as part of the ceremony, the rabbi asked him to read a psalm, and he read it, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, he began. And then the rabbi instructed Leon Waseltier to read another psalm, but Waseltier did not read it. Instead, he sang. He stepped closer to the grave, and he sang, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Waseltier said, My song grew as if to make room within it for all the true and punished people who gathered around it, to shield them with its splendor and to seal them with its peace. And then the service was almost over, but there was, there was one thing yet to do, left to do. Standing there in the icy cemetery, looking at his father's grave, occupying that space between faith and doubt, that place where faith and meaning are arrested, Waseltier recited once more the Kaddish. So like Jesus in that devil-infested wilderness calling upon the words of faith he has, had learned as a child, Waseltier stood in his own wilderness and called upon the words he had been given. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. He said, I spoke in the ashes of fury and spoke the sentences of praise. Was that my voice? It was no longer the effusion of woe. Magnified, I said. Sanctified, I said. I looked above me. I looked below me. With my own, own eyes, I saw magnificence. And so it went with Leon Wisseltier. So it went with Jesus. And when he had finished that time and the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time and then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and the glory of the Lord was round about him. And may it be so for us. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. May his great name be blessed. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our final hymn and hymn of invitation is, O oh Jesus, I have promised. Let us sing together.
forth in the strength of God's mighty spirit this week and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of God's Holy Spirit be with you always. See you next time.